Hello folks, right today down in Devon, um, as you can see I'm utterly filthy, uh, I've been um, taking apart the Rover engine, or took apart the old Rover engine, this is the Rover V8 that I bought on eBay um, very 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 cheaply um, and uh, I'm just tearing it down to find out what sort of state it's in, right so let me uh, stop this and I'm going to go the other way around. Right, so what have we found? Well, we know the state of the bearings, because we've done that already. We know the state of the pistons and the cone rods. Uh, I cleaned the crank up, as you can see. It's going to need a little bit more than a polish, but it's not a huge issue. I need to get a new set of bearings anyway. Um, this is going to need at least a 10 thou grind, I think. Um, but overall, it's not too bad. I'll get the machine shop to check it straight, although it did spin quite happily when all the main bearing caps were done up. Um, there's the main bearing bolts, they've been given a clean, I'm cleaning off the main bearing caps. Uh, there they are in there. I bought the little ultrasonic cleaner down to Devon because it's more used down here than it is up at home. Right, okay. So, I've given it a right proper gunking off. Um, it's not horrific. Um, it could be well once the rain's just started again. It could be a lot worse. A um, couple of things I've noticed, first and foremost, I don't know if you can see there's a tide mark in this cylinder. Yeah, that cylinder was full of water and left. It's not badly rusted, uh, but it certainly needs a hone. There is no lip at the top of any of these bores. Um, and I'm going to just double check the, the size. There's a nasty mark on that cylinder down there. The hone might just get that out. Um, so, right, let me just tip the engine up the other way. Right, so this is the... I'll just swivelled it around these these engine crank these engine hoist things they're bloody brilliant right okay this cylinder also has a tide mark as does this one you can't really see them because i've wiped oil down the bores now uh, really to protect them these cylinders have a very 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 slight lip at the top i suspect a hone will get it out but again i'm going to measure the bores and find out again it's not a huge issue if i have to bore the cylinders out i've got to get a new set of pistons anyway so um it's just the cost of boring out really. Um, as far as the rest of it's concerned, unusual marks. Looks like someone's had some fun getting um, the hydraulic tappets out. The hydraulic tappets go in these holes here um, and the push rods go up those channels to the cylinder head which goes in the top. Um, so someone's had some fun there I think. I didn't notice these before I cleaned all of the black death out of the valley. And again over here there's something amusing been going on. I'm not quite sure I know what. I think this engine's been pretty fucking abused to be honest. Um, other things I've noticed, there's paint missing from the front half of the block. Um, strange because there is no paint there at all. Um, everything else is painted all round. Um, just that section isn't. Um, it's possible it's been on fire, which would explain a number of things. I wonder if it's a banger racist car engine. That would be a laugh, wouldn't it? Um, in which case it would be the great recovery. So I think what I need to do then, um, I'm going to take this back to my engine workshop, Chappie. Um, oh, there's glue all over the... This is glue on here, by the way. So someone's actually glued a head gasket on. Um, <coughs> I don't know why, because the gaskets that you would use on these would be um, copper. But I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? So like I say, the, the next steps for this really are to take it to my engine man get his realistic assessment on whether it is a viable runner or whether it's a coffee table. Um, when it's all stripped down like this, it's not too bad. Um, and then I suspect it's going to be a light hone. It's going to be a chemical dip um, and the rest of the work will be on the crankshaft. I'm going to pull all the core plugs out of it next um, because some of these core plugs are especially inaccessible. Like that one and that one. It's normally these fellas down the side here that leak. Uh, so these ones normally leak, you can see they're quite solid, but I'm going to pop them out anyway. Um, the reason being is you don't know how much they've rusted behind. Um, so yeah, it's been a fun morning cleaning that up. Uh, the front cover, timing cover, look at him. He's come up alright. So that's one from a Range Rover. So this has been fitted onto, the, uh, onto this engine. I suspect this engine came out of some sort of Land Rover. Um, it's got a low compression. Um, uh, engine number and it had low compression pistons in it but it's got the higher water pump uh, which would indicate it's come out of a Land Rover um, there's the oil pump on the bottom of it front seal the crankshaft comes through there uh, water pump goes up here other than that oh, sorry the distributor goes in that hole there at the top and if you look 
inside, so there's a lot of clattering and clanking, isn't there? What you basically get is the distributor goes in through this hole, drive comes down through there, and the, the dog goes into this hole here, uh, and then the oil pump goes up through there, and the oil pump drives off the distributor, and there's a, a gear here, which then runs off the front of the timing, that timing chain just runs in that sort of area. The camshaft is about here in the engine block. In fact, if we look at the front of the engine block, there's the camshaft bearing. Crankshaft goes down here, camshaft goes there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pop all of these uh, core plugs out. That's not a core plug, that's a bearing. I want to measure these bearings as well, because if these bearings are fucked as well, uh, then that's more machining work than I'm going to need to pay for. And it might actually end up being more cost effective just to take the SD1 engine apart, which I know works. That's the one engine that was in the car already. I knew it works. Um, there was no, nothing really particularly wrong with it. I just wanted to take it apart and give it a good clean um, and replace bearings and rings. Um, so I may end up doing that anyway. But now I've got the socket to undo the front um, pulley uh, dog because um, there needs a special socket for that. Um, I chose the millimetre close version of it. I'll go through that in a minute. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's what I've been up to. Bugger all's happened with that. Um, the weather's not the greatest. Um, I've got a whole load of painting I want to do, so I want to paint up. I've got all the bits now to rebuild the A-frame. Um, it just all needs painting up, cleaning. Um, I could fit the uh, the cups into the end caps there, get the um, A-frame ready for painting. Um, I might build up the brakes and the brake lines, because I've got all the calipers with me, um, and my incredible brake line straightening tool. So I might do all that. Just see if I can get something done. Um, yeah, fun and games, eh? Core plugs have come out quite neatly. Nothing really that nasty in there. There's uh, some crap. Uh, interestingly, uh, inside this one here, there is uh, evidence of uh, silicon sealant. Um, so someone's been abusing silicon sealant. On the whole, though, the core plugs. While they're rusty, um, a lot of this stuff here is uh, just you know, poor quality coolant. All three of these ones came out without any huge issue. Um, you don't know until you take them out how, how, how good they are. These ones actually seem to be uh, quite good. They'll last a little bit longer. None of them was weakened. Of course, I can't put them back in again because they've been knocked out. But uh, now that they're out, I can give the inside of the block a good old jet through. You see there's quite a lot of shit in there. Um, that shit ultimately ends up going around and uh, and filling up the uh, the radiator with gank. Um, so I'll get the pressure washer in there um, and, and, and give that a jet through. I also need to um, clean out the core plugs from the other side. So I've got a load more core plugs to do. I've got a couple on the back here on the other side. Um, I don't think there's any in the V. No, they're all on the outside. And here is why you should do the core plugs on both sides. So all of these were a swine to get out. And all of them, I was able to put the screwdriver through very easily. Um, so they're weakened on the inside. These ones are a lot older than the three that were on the other side. Again, inside, you see a lot of gank. Um, there's no gap there between the cylinders. So um, I need to possibly have a chemical bath or something. You can see on this, what you're basically looking at is through the core plug, you're looking at the cylinder ball. So if we look at where the core plug is in relation to the cylinders, you've got the liner that goes down the inside and there should be a gap in between the liners. You can see it at the top, but the bottom is all just furred up. That one's completely furred up. And that one again is completely furred up. Um, I, it's just all full of shit. There we are. See, that's what it should look like. This uh, cooling system has got a lot of crap. Fortunately, it's all quite soft crap, so I think it'll just all wash out. If I put the hose pipe in here, for instance, I think it will just all wash through. Um, so I'm going to knock because the, the, the cooling system goes in through that hole there. Um, and it then runs around the inside of the block. It doesn't go down into the crankcase, only around the top end where the cylinders are. There's no need for it to run any lower than that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to need to, give, need to give this a proper 
good. All right, clean now. This is the sort of shit you see that uh, just plugs up the radiator and the heater. You kind of fill your engine back up again. This is the reason why you need to pull core plugs out on an engine where you just do not know the history. Uh, right, what I'm going to do next, I think, is I'm going to drop this down to the deck. Uh, this needs to be lifted off so I can get the frame off um, and then get the uh, two core plugs out the back. So the block is pretty much now ready for the engineers. Um, I found out what was bugging that hole up because when I was trying to put it onto my engine stand, it wouldn't go in. Uh, I found that in there. Nice little end of someone's tap. These, these things, by the way, when these things break off in holes, they are an utter bastard to get out. Um, now, I was able to see when I was drilling that, that that was the thin end. So tapping from the back, couple of sharp taps, and it flew out. Look at that. Once these things are in, often they are an absolute and utter swine to remove. Right, that said, I have removed as a big blanking plate that goes over the end of the camshaft gallery. Uh, all of the um, little um, uh, core plugs, they've all been removed. Now every single one of them is out. There were a couple that were, were dodgy, three, uh, but on the whole they were okay. Um, I've cleaned up the bearing caps and they're all back on again now. So really it's okay. Oh, well, I've knocked out the old dipstick because the dipstick tube was broken um, at the top end. So it comes out of a hole down here somewhere there. It comes out of that hole there. Um, so I found it's easier to cut the top off, flush, drift it through. Um, what else have I got to do with it? It's pretty much it. I mean, because it's alloy, this thing is quite light. You can, that's one hand. Look at that, one hand, lift you up. Um, it, it helps if I'm using two hands, of course. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, I think we are ready for some action now. Um, we'll see what the, uh, the engineering shop says. What I'm going to do next, I think, is start stripping that one down, because I'm not anticipating good news, good results from this one. I think it's possibly, just possibly, a bit too far gone. But we'll see. Worst comes to the worst, I'll make a table out of it. Right, that was it. Next.